Hello and welcome to Comic Book Herald's Road to the Marvel Universe comics of writer and comics creator Donnie Cates. Donnie Cates is a writer who's been in the Marvel Universe for about three-ish years now. He's going to be the writer alongside artist Ryan Stegman on Marvel's newest 2019 event, Absolute Carnage. And I am going to walk through today the Marvel Universe comics that he has written to date. The reason I'm doing this is Donny Cates has quickly established himself as one of the most popular and most interesting up-and-coming writers at Marvel Comics. He has also written across a fairly wide variety of titles, and what can help is a lot of times with individual creators, they might do stories that intersect between various properties and comics that they write. So one pet theory that I've been working on is the idea of basically individual creator verses within the larger construct of Marvel or DC Comics, the big two shared superhero universes that dominate superhero comics in the modern industry. Some famous examples of this that I quite like, you have Jonathan Hickman, at Marvel from 2008 to 2016, wove stories between titles like Fantastic Four, Avengers, New Avengers, all building up to an event in 2015 called Secret Wars. There's quite a bit more to that. Of course, I've got a full reading order over on Comic Book Herald if you want to check that out. Speaking of which, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of comicbookherald.com. I've got links in the show notes here for all the comics and guides that I will be talking about today. So if you're interested in seeing these in full, you can always go to those links and check out the content on CBH. Or, of course, just uh, give it a search or find me at Comic Book Herald really anywhere on social or on the web, and I'll help point you in the right direction. So the reason I'm doing this with Kate's, even though it's only been three years, like I said, he's been bouncing around series, and it's also, I think, going to help add to your enjoyment of some of the biggest stories in Marvel since 2017, including, you know, what is now coming out as Absolute Carnage. I think it's a really fun ride. There's a lot of good stuff there. Before I get into the comics, and sort of, I think I've got it broken down into effectively like five eras of, or five really segments of comics that Cates has has written so far. Before I get into that, some themes as a writer that I think Cates has explored and done really well to date is he takes things that seem maybe down to earth and he blows up these really big, ambitious, uh, conceptual hooks around everything he does that makes the stories at a minimum compelling. So even when it doesn't work, and we'll talk about some examples, they are interesting ideas that tend to be batted around. So I think like best case scenario, when the work's really firing, for example, some comics he's writing that are the most popular, we're going to talk about here, but you got Thanos and Venom. When it's really firing, it's big, ambitious, bold storytelling that genuinely changes the direction and sort of the status quo for the characters that are properties that have, you know, a long history of comics. And I think that's that's honestly one of the biggest things I look for in new series today is who is telling the story that we're going to look back 15, 20 years from now and say this was a moment in this character's history or this was a moment in Marvel Comics history that is is one you should go back to, you know, 15 years from now. And this is where you should start because everything before this, it started to change here and there was a new direction. You know, this is something we're seeing a lot of in the world of X-Men right now in 2019. Jonathan Hickman, as I'm recording this, just dropped House of X number one and Powers of X number one. And there's all this talk of paradigm shifts and moments in X-Men history that mark, you know, effectively starting places, right? When did creators come in and have a vision that marks a new starting place? And Kate's is good at giving at a minimum an effort to get there with the properties he's on. So that's one big thing that we're going to be talking about. And the second thing that I think is interesting is Donny Cates is a writer who is, I think he would technically qualify as a millennial, which, you know, gets gets misconstrued a lot. It means someone in their 30s as well. And the reason I reference that um, is not to say that he's killing the avocado industry or something so trite, so much as to say his touchstones and his his references in Marvel Comics history are one very they're more modern 
<laughs> than than many creators have been in the past. They're like late '90s, early 2000s type touchstones. Or actually, really, we could just take like the '90s as a whole. You know, this is somebody who grew up in a lot of ways, was reading comics, and seemed to be a fan throughout the '90s, which explains you know the love of things like Venom and Ghost Rider, which we'll talk about. And two, it also means that his touchstones and references are much closer to my own. So Kate's in particular has spoken about being a really big fan of the Marvel Knights era of Marvel, which is when I was going back and getting into Marvel comics was one of the areas that and, and time periods that hooked me on the publisher and on the storytelling as well. And if you're not familiar, Marvel Knights, it started in 1998 as an initiative to sort of really modernize the Marvel Comics landscape after they'd had some serious troubles and had actually gone bankrupt at one point. Um, and the, the series that like, fought, fell under or into that imprint were books like Black Panther, written by Christopher Priest. You had the Inhumans 12 issue uh, maxi series by Paul Jenkins and Jai Lee, um, and some others that came out of that as well. For example, like Century, written by Paul Jenkins, with again, art by Lee. So, those touch points are clear throughout Kate's work. Without further ado, let's start getting into the actual reading order. And again, you can check out the actual list in the show notes here and the link over on comicbookherald.com. So things really begin actually in 2017 event Secret Empire. Now, Kate's did not have a huge, uh, a huge what would you say, influence or or part of Secret Empire, but it's where some of his Marvel writing begins. He actually co-writes um, a couple short stories with writer Nick Spencer throughout the Secret Empire event, and what he is going to come into Marvel, or when he's going to come into Marvel, it's with Doctor Strange, and that comic is going to pretty quickly, after one story arc, kind of go back to referencing Secret Empire. So, it helps to have some familiarity with that event. I don't know necessarily you need to re go back and read, you know, the full event reading order. And of course, you can find that whole thing over on CBH. Um, but it, familiarity helps, I think, for our purposes. And this will be a spoiler for Secret Empire uh, in reference to what's going to happen in Doctor Strange. So if you don't want to know that, skip ahead like 15 seconds. In Secret Empire, uh, Las Vegas is effectively destroyed. And the crossover, Doctor Strange Damnation, which Case co-writes with event writer Nick Spencer, it is very much a follow-up to that moment in Secret Empire. But that said, I think the stuff that's going to be most memorable is not necessarily the Damnation crossover, even though that's pretty fun. And even though that pulls in, you know, I was talking about 90s touchstones as a big part. Of, of the Kate's experience, you know, it pulls in the Midnight Suns in some weird and interesting ways that have really not been fully or properly explored, I would say, in Marvel Comics to date. Maybe there's more to come. Um, but really, the most interesting parts of Doctor Strange are, one, the the story begins with, with collaboration with artist Gabriel Hernandez-Walta, and it's a story kicking off the Marvel legacy era of Doctor Strange with actually a story looking at what if Loki became the new Sorcerer Supreme. So it, it really sort of jumps ahead from the previous Jason Aaron written run, and it sets the stage with, you know, Doctor Strange working as just like a veterinarian, and uh, Loki taking over as the Marvel Universe new Sorcerer Supreme. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about big, ambitious hooks that Kate's likes to employ. It starts the book with Kate's as seemingly legitimate, or with not Kate's, with Loki seemingly legitimately as Marvel's new Sorcerer Supreme. And it deals with the magic universe and characters like Scarlet Witch all kind of adjusting to that and trying to figure out what's going on with Stephen Strange. And in the midst of all this, you have Loki now living in Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum and sort of unleashing some things that it turns out Doctor Strange has kept secret in his house, including, and I'm not going to spoil this for someone who hasn't read it yet, but including a Marvel character that has been pretty much in storage for uh, over a decade that again is going to speak to some of the themes I called out earlier and, and it's it's a surprise and it's a really fun one and those those issues I think they're really good I they're my favorite Doctor Strange stories in in a while I mean I would say since um oh man it's tough like looking back I mean Definitely some of the most interesting since Brian K. Vaughn and Marcus Martin did The Oath, which is over a decade old at this point. So, like I said, then we go into the Damnation crossover, which I spoke to a bit. 
And out of that, Doctor Strange, you know, crosses over with the big event for a while before getting to Doctor Strange number 390, which is one of those Doctor Strange and Spider-Man team-up stories. And it's one of my favorite comics that Cates has written. Uh, it also heavily includes Doctor Strange's ghost dog. I believe his name is Baxter, who is a, a phenomenal character in his own right. Apologies to all the Baxter heads if it's like Buster or something. But I think it's Baxter. So that's strange. Or that's Cates on strange. Sometimes it gets strange, but it's not too wild. And that all kind of builds to the second segment of the Kate's Marvel Universe. And this is the big one that is, it really sets the stage for, I think, both the influence that he's going to have as a writer and also a lot of the, the tenets and themes and directions of where the Marvel Universe is heading. It's the Thanos saga. It starts in a story called Thanos Wins. This is one of the biggest stories of 2017 and into early 2018. It was Thanos issues number 13 to number 18. And this one, it was kind of just a confluence of perfect timing with a, again, ambitious story looking at a future universe where Thanos won. You know, it's, it's present day Thanos traveling ahead in time to a version of himself who has already won. And of course, there's all sorts of... Of it, it actually reminds me of some stories that are done well like this, like Future Imperfect, um, which is a story where the Hulk is is a now the Maestro, a conqueror of the entire Marvel Universe, and it's it's by Peter David and Marvel, uh, not Marvel Wolfman, Peter David and George Perez, and there's uh, you know there's like this classic iconic shot of the Maestro's trophy room, and it's got all of the Marvel characters and all of their stuff basically and it's one of my favorite george perez layouts because it gives you this thing of like it doesn't tell you how he defeated thor but there's mjolnir or whatever it is and you get some of that here with artist jeff shaw uh pairing with kate's on thanos wins where you have you know kind of the trophy room or in this case like you know some of the remnants of the marvel universe that we know that are still around and still kind of rebelling or just completely now destroyed by this future state thanos the conqueror and one of the big ones that hangs around is uh, a ghost rider <laughs> of sorts. And this is the cosmic ghost rider who's going to continue out of this, was a fan favorite pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not going to spoil more than I need to hear who he is, but needless to say, that's going to be developed. Um, I will be talking about him a bit when I get to the cosmic ghost rider series that comes out of this. So I'll warn you of spoilers at that time for anyone who, again, hasn't read up on all this yet. But again, like this story's huge. It's it's exactly the kind of like in and out insane Marvel cosmic insanity that to <laughs> to be overly redundant um, that like a new reader could jump in and enjoy. I think I honestly think there's there's some controversy here and I won't get into that in the, in the case of this you know recording but there's some controversy about like how much overlap there is with thanos creator jim starlin's ongoing graphic novels that are happening at the same time here but one thing i think kate's does well with thanos wins and, and alongside shaw as the collaborator is captures the spirit of what made the best thanos stories like infinity gauntlet such big deals and so important in the marvel universe landscape and then you couple that with this book is released alongside Infinity War and in then Avengers Endgame and the MCU making Thanos like a pop culture mainstay. You know, one of the most iconic villains of all time by proxy of these huge influential movies. And then you have the story come out and it's really, it's an easy one for people to pick up and be like, what does he look like in the comics? Oh, here's a modern version. So this book is a huge deal. I don't love it as much as a lot of people, but I would be completely lying if i said it wasn't like very very well done and very compelling coming out of this there's there's an annual and then there's kind of two things there's a spin-off called cosmic ghost rider so at this point we start to get more of a like five issue mini approach by the writer donny cates like he he will tackle different books in smaller increments um and, and those actually sort of weave in and out of themes and out of connections to previous work he's done at marvel cosmic ghost rider is a good example of this he takes on the character of cosmic ghost rider and basically gives him a reaction series to the events 
of Thanos wins. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to spoil anything other than to say this kind of feels like it could be one of those books that um, that are very much just like Marvel being saying, hey, this was this was really popular with fans, right? What if we made a whole miniseries out of it? And it feeling like maybe sort of too much fan service, but actually it's way better than it has any right to be. It's smart. Um, they the creators here, Kate's and Dylan Burnett, they play with the idea of like, would you go back in time and kill Hitler? Uh, you know, when he was born, effectively, is the the big philosophical question, I think, at the heart of this book. Um, but it's shockingly good for what could have just been goofy, you know, fan service. And then you get uh, some some minis that are referenced in the comic curled reading order, basically all following up on events that happened to Thanos in the pages of the non Kate's written events, Infinity Countdown and Infinity Wars. So those are must reads i think if you want to do this chunk of the marvel universe uh it's also i think setting the stage for the fact that kate's is going to more than anything so far be really tapping into the cosmic side of the marvel universe i think he is probably the lead architect of marvel cosmic at this point and we're going to continue to see more of that as i continue going through the books he's written to date okay after strange and, and Thanos wins. There are the next big books that come from Cates. The biggest one is Venom. And this is his longest running ongoing series at Marvel. We're approaching about 20 issues by the time all is said and done with Absolute Carnage. And of course, this is also the lead up series to the event, Absolute Carnage. So this is his longest going run, which again, I think speaks to 90s touchstones. What's more 90 than, than Venom? Um, maybe Punisher, I'll give you that. Maybe Wolverine to a degree, but Venom pretty high up there. Uh, one series that he wrote sort of alongside this that gets not as much attention, but I think is worth calling out is Death of the Inhumans. This is a five issue mini series with artist Ariel Olivetti. And it is one of my less favorite books on this list. I think it's pretty average at best. That said, this is what I'm talking about when I said the ambition is there even if the execution isn't necessarily. So I think Death of the Inhumans is pretty flawed. I don't think it's great. Nonetheless, it's really trying to tackle like the entire history of the Inhumans, trying to tackle their place in the Marvel landscape. And it does so in somewhat interesting ways. I think at an absolute minimum, Death of the Inhumans gives us a friendship between Beta Ray Bill, that longtime Thor player, and Lockjaw, the pup. So that's going <laughs> to, and, and amazingly, I think the cool thing about what Cades is doing here is that's going to matter by the time he gets to Guardians of the Galaxy. But before that, there's Venom, and Venom, I think, alongside artist Ryan Stegman, is the clearest, or was the clearest indicator to me that this is a writer that I'm going to, that I'm just definitely going to be following. Like, whatever he's doing at Marvel is going to be of a caliber that I'm, at a, like again, at a minimum, I'm going to check out a few issues and see if it's a series I like. I'm not a big Eddie Brock or Venom fan. I, I like the characters. I've always liked Spider-Man more, you know, so I like Venom maybe in the context of Spider-Man books. But the only Venom ongoing that I've ever really been hooked on is the Agent Venom series when it was actually Flash Thompson written by Rick Remender. So this book takes Eddie Brock, makes him one of the most compelling characters in the Marvel Universe. It deals with the actual mental implications of having a symbiote attached to you all the time in some pretty fascinating ways. And it also blows up this enormous, uh, vast cosmic mythology with the new character Null, who's the god of the symbiotes. And through it all, it's using this like amazing red, black, dark kind of heavy metal color palette and Ryan Stegman's ability to draw symbiote dragons because those are basically the new gods of the symbiote universe. So it's really expanding our our perspective of what or our like shared understanding of what a symbiote is and what it can be. It's taking some ideas of the cosmic nature of the alien suit and really blowing it up into something much, much bigger. And I think this is this is just inherently interesting. And everything in Venom, it's quite good. And it's also all building again to the 2019 event, Absolute Carnage. So I'm going to skip over 
Marvel Knights, which I've got listed on here. This is a basically is the 20th anniversary celebration. It's a six issue mini that Cates was the quote unquote showrunner for. So he got to like lead this project of sort of reimagining a Marvel Knights universe story. And it's it's like a really interesting experiment if you're a big Marvel Knights fan. I think if not, again, it's out of continuity. So it's not gonna be the most important thing to understanding his his version of the Marvel Universe. The next segment though is Cosmic Comics continued. And here we really get, you know, we had Thanos, we have sort of the cosmic elements of Null, God of Symbiotes in the pages of Venom, but here we get Kate's taking over as the writer of the ongoing and rebooted Guardians of the Galaxy series, as well as a five issue miniseries, Silver Surfer Black. These books, we get to see, okay, Cates is a cosmic architect. What's he going to do with all those characters like Peter Quill, like Groot, like Gamora? What's he going to do with the legacy of his work on Thanos and some stories that he's written there? And all of that comes back in this enormous Guardian story. I mean, even the question of who's going to be a Guardian of the Galaxy is interesting. And you get to see characters like Cosmic Ghost Rider back in the fray. We see Beta Ray Bill and Lockjaw back in the fray. We see Eros, the brother of Thanos, playing a pretty... For Black, it ties in ever so slightly. Basically, the reading order here is you do the first issue or the first five issues of Guardians, then you do the first issue of Silver Surfer Black, and then you do Guardians of the Galaxy Annual number one. Um, pardon me. And then you're going to jump back to Guardians and then Silver Surfer. Again, I've got this all listed out over on comicbookherald.com. So those books are setting a cosmic landscape. They are clearly building to something. My hypothesis, my theory at this point is we're going to get a a new version of Annihilation with Kate's writing it. I'd be pretty surprised if that's aren't if that's not something that these books build to. It just feels very much in line with his touchstones and in line with I think where where Marvel wants to move this. I hope it's not just like Annihilation 2, you know? I hope it's something new, but of course, time will tell the final piece of the Donny Cates Marvel Universe are the Marvel events of 2019 so the first one is actually you know you have War of the Realms and there's Venom crossovers throughout War of the Realms there's three issues but importantly none of these are actually written by Cates and none of these have art by Ryan Stegman so it's not the core creative team behind Venom that is typically or that is doing these War of the Realms crossovers it's actually Cullen Bond writing who's you know got a good experience with Venom following up on the Remender run within a, a somewhat underrated run of his own um, but that said the actual more connective tissue comes in the core War of the Realms series itself with Jason Aaron referencing Jason Aaron writing War of the Realms, referencing back to some of the mythology that Cates and Stegman have developed in the pages of Venom. He actually has Malekith, the Dark Elf, who's leading this War of the Realms in the assault on Midgard. He has him capturing Venom or capturing the symbiote and trying to call upon, you know, basically the powers of Null and, and the symbiotes in his quest for conquering Midgard. It's actually a really cool bit of calling back to stuff that has happened in Kate's work because in Venom itself, you have Null God of the Symbiotes referencing some uh, ideas and, and cosmic like structure that Aaron has put together in his pages of Thor. So you see these creators really sort of syncing up ideas and, and using each other to sort of leverage ideas and build a vast cosmic conspiracy. That's all really cool. Again, it's kind of behind the scenes stuff. It's not the main point of War of the Realms, but I think if you've been reading all of those things, they tend to add value to each other. The next event, though, is going to be much more directly related to the writing and, and Marvel Universe of Donny Cates, and that is Absolute Carnage, which at the time of this recording is just about to come out. Again, Venom is the main series you want to read, but if you want to get like the whole Marvel Universe of Donny Cates as a writer, I, I think it's pretty achievable. You know, again, we're only going back to like 2017 here and we're bouncing around series. Yes, but it's not too many comic book issues. I, I think that's what makes this kind of fun right now is as a new, very, very, um, you know, a writer, a lot of people are interested in, you can actually read most of these comics. A lot of them are already available on Marvel Unlimited too, uh, without feeling like super, super overwhelmed, but I'm stoked for absolute carnage. I can't wait to see it. I have a lot of faith in Cates and Stegman as creators. There are of course going to be times throughout that, which I'll be tracking over on the comic book Herald Absolute Carnage reading order as well. In the meantime, though, this has been the Marvel Universe comics of writer Donny Cates. I'm sure I'll probably need to do an update as he has a good and long career ahead of him, hopefully with Marvel. 
Um, but if you like the work here, if you like the, the YouTube videos or the podcast on best comics ever, um, or just the content, you can always go on over to comicbookherald.com and find more. You can find me, Dave, anywhere at Comic Book Herald, uh, pretty much anywhere online. And if you really like the site and want to support and find some bonuses and ways to help out the site, you can go to patreon.com slash comic book herald for ways to do all of that. So thanks everybody for listening. This has been fun. This is the Marvel Universe of Donny Cates. Don't forget, you can find links to all the comics I talked about.